Hey everybody, this is Ilad, and I'm coming to you from the Starmada server. Aw, yeah. So, as you may have noticed, there was not an episode last week. Um, which is really, at first I was really kind of upset about that because... Uh, I had something really awesome planned. I had a tutorial for something that I think would be very useful to a lot of people. But as it turns out, everything that I had done was invalidated by the cargo update. <laughs> so I guess everything worked out for the best. And today we are going to make something much more relevant happen. So let me just beam right up to my orbital station. And I'll show y'all what we got going on and today I learned that you can't transport while in sitting mode <laughs> alright so what we have here is a whole lot of progress um, the all of the building I did on camera in my my failed episode my my non voiced episode was it ended up being invalidated, but uh, that's cool because I had already accomplished a lot of stuff that I haven't had to undo, and now I have even more stuff to show y'all. So let me actually drop down into build mode so I can get kind of a, a better view on things. Man, I wish gravity worked properly up here. And boom, all right. Give you the full dramatic effect. Alright, so first of all, the cargo update, right? <laughs> uh, I like it. I really do. I'm not one of the people who's going around talking about how stupid and awful and pointless it is. Because I really like it. Uh, but it was inconvenient. It still is inconvenient to, to make the transition. Uh, I get that. Everybody gets that. We all understand. But yeah, I, I'm really happy about the update. So, uh, on this side of my station, I added these cargo pods, and all they are is a huge collection of cargo storage, <laughs> uh, cargo areas, whatever they're called, um, cargo space, yeah. So, I've got a lot more cargo space on the station now. Uh, unfortunately, I'm probably pretty much going to have to leave this like this, because right now, even though all of these pods, which by the way are really just two pods, one on this side, one on this side, the separation isn't real, so don't tell anybody. Uh, they're 90% they're full, so that's, that's unfortunate. I do have a lot of projects I need to do that's going to use a lot of my blocks, but, um, but yeah, I was hoping to be able to store more than that in this amount of space. Uh, here's my only storage chest. I had a full sorting system set up, um, and I tore it out because it really wasn't relevant anymore. Um, you know, it is what it is. Up here, I had a really cool factory set up, and uh, one of the things, the big focus of the episode was the fact that I got uh, an automated storage or an automated factory quota set up where I could press a button and it would produce, you know, 10 of an item or 100 of an item or a thousand of an item and shut itself off. It didn't work perfectly though, and from my experiments on my single player creative world, I think it will actually work better now after the cargo update. So the main focus of this episode, after a little bit of progress update, is going to be to show you how to build that because it's a really nifty setup and it's it's relatively simple to build um, super useful too but out here we have my harvester ship I've done a lot of work on it and this morning I just finished adding in the cargo deck up here now it's empty now that's what all this ugly gray and green stuff is is the empty cargo spaces but uh, it was very full earlier. We've even got little piles up here. And what it was full of was capsules that I could go and sell to stations to make credits. Uh, 
now it's it's got nothing in it and I don't know how many capsules I'm actually going to be able to store. I'm probably going to have to build a dedicated freighter to carry capsules around to sell them, which is a little inconvenient, but you know, it's more realistic than loading up a salvage ship with stuff like that, you know, cuz I don't know. Kind of breaks the immersion. I'm either going on a harvesting mission or I'm going on a, a merchant mission or I'm going somewhere else, but I shouldn't be doing them all in the same ship unless it's a very big multi-purpose ship. Uh, I do have a little basic rail up here for my uh, my panda scooter to dock on. A little ramp coming up from the side door. Um, whoa! I apparently was not facing the and I've got some other little nifty logic features in that I might as well go up and show you off since I'm out of build mode anyway. And I had this whole hallway finished too, but it was cramped for space and like I said, the cargo update invalidated a lot of the work I'd done. Oh, by the way, that huge uh, storage block with all the stuff connected is currently set as my... Um, position is blocked by... Ah! Why am I blocking the position? And why is gravity not working? It's currently set as my personal uh, cargo. Yeah. I think is what I was saying. I hope I didn't totally break that sentence. Uh, there is an automatic gravity switcher. It's uh, you know an area, what you call it, module hooked in with the gravity. It works part of the time. It really does. So anyhow. Yeah, here's my salvager. Um, it's pretty decent, I think. Uh, so let's jump into flight mode and I'll show you all what I've got going on with that. Acceleration is okay. Of course, it gets slower as I uh, as I fill up this, the cargo areas. Let's see if I see you see a glow there. I'll show you what that is in a minute. If I go up here or out here, nice big cargo area. Uh, we'll just assume that it's all held in place through uh, you know some kind of gravity attached system. Um, little flight deck up here. Uh, I could mount a PD turret up here, you know stuff like that if I need to. Um, storage modules. I mean, these aren't actually storage. Actually, they have power reactors in them, but whatever. Um, yeah. And if I go back into build mode, you see this, this great big engine. Now, this was not glowing when I was docked to the station. As soon as I dock uh, through the, the USD here, um, the, the beacon blocks inside this all turn off, which I think is pretty awesome. I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, let's see. Uh huh, uh huh. If I go back into flight mode, obviously I'm in the cockpit now. I've got a docking camera, and I've got a salvage camera. And I never get them mixed up because they're labeled. Oh, yeah. This is a little trick I learned. I'm going to have to find the video I learned it from and link it in my description. But basically, what it boils down to is next to your cameras, if you arrange a display module and kind of let the text run off the side, you can sort of project holographic text out into the thin air. And I really like the way that it looks, coming, kind of coming down at an angle for a camera label. You can use it for a lot of other things too, so y'all need to check out that video, assuming I was able to find it and link it, of course. Um, so, let's dock again. Here we are. So the station needs a lot of work done on it. I still haven't glassed in the dome. Um, don't worry. Whoa, stop, 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 stop. Don't worry about that cube up there. That's going to be one of my very, very near future upcoming projects. Um, I want to flesh out the uh, the end that I have cargo docked to a little bit more. Really, I could, I mean, not cargo, but a uh, harvester. Really, I could dock the harvester at either end, 
but I'm actually, I've got some specific plans for it since it is a harvesting ship. Let's see, I'm not in gravity right now, so I'm going to point, and I'm going to back out. I hope this works properly. I'm going to unlock the camera. And as I dock, you should see the engines shut off. Aha! Engines shut off. Can't believe I lined that up. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. I love this. Um, all right. So let's get on to the main business of the day, which is showing y'all how to set up automatic automatic factory quotas. So here's the basic idea. I want to be able to punch a button and have limited numbers of items produced on a production run. It's going to be 10 for the top row, 100 for the bottom row, or middle row, and 1,000 for the bottom row. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a an AND behind each one of these AND behind each one of these buttons. C, click, C, click. Okay, and we'll come back to what the uh, the other input for that's going to be in a little bit. Now, uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to start here. Uh, I come down here, the AND is going to toggle a couple of things. I'm building this from memory, so I'm not going to get it 100% right right away. Alright, so this AND, when, once it's on, is going to toggle a flip-flop. The flip-flop is going to be attached to a knot, so let me go ahead and get that set up. The knot is going to partly, one of its functions is going to be to go back into the end gate. Right, so uh, I can only toggle the flip-flop if the flip-flop is off. Let me just set up another button up here for testing purposes. Button C, V. See right now, everything's great. Like, if it were toggled straight into the flip-flop, I can toggle it with each button pressed. But, right, uh, but with this button, which is the actual button we're going to use, I can only toggle it if the flip-flop is already off. doesn't matter what I do. If the flip-flop is on, I can't use it. Alright, so I'm going to put this back into this state because I want the flip-flop off right now. Now, the flip-flop is going to come down here and it's going to control this storage pole. Yeah? And the nut is going to control this storage pole. And they're going to pull from each other. Let me go ahead and see... Not is yeah that's good okay so right now it's running exactly the way that it ought to and since this is the row where I'm gonna do ten items at a, at once I'm gonna put nope I'm wrong I'm gonna put five alloyed metal mesh into this thing uh, by the way I need to set this up add single alloyed metal mesh and I'm gonna set it for a thousand. Not that I'll ever need that many. Okay. So with one single pull tick, it's going to completely empty this one. And this one was set up to do alloyed metal mesh one at a time. Okay, so far so good. Did I get that? Yeah, I did get that in the right place. That's a good feeling. All right. Um, now, when this is full it's going to or when it has items in it rather it's going to activate this ore block and these these have to be linked now if you miss that in the cargo update uh, except I think I'm actually gonna drop it right here um, these do have to be linked they can't just be adjacent adjacent is no longer good enough okay uh, this 
is going to activate this ore block. And I'm going to place it right here where it'll be visible, partly as an indicator of when it's got items in it. Did I say full? When it's not empty, it's going to activate it. Right now, it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. And next thing we need is we need this flip-flop to control this factory. So when the flip-flops on the factory is running, when this becomes empty, when this uh, the storage right here becomes empty, it's going to activate a knot. Wait, no, that's the knot. There we go. And that knot is going to toggle the flip flip flop. So here's the idea, and if this may not be complete yet, I've got to test it because I'm pretty sure my brain is leaving out a big, uh, a big chunk of it. But the idea is I toggle the button, flip-flop cuts on. The flip-flop cuts on, this storage pole shuts off, this starts pulling one item at a time. When this is completely empty, it it uh, flips the flip-flop again and the factory only runs while the flip-flop is active which I need to fix. Alright. That may mean I don't need this. It's not connected to anything. This seems a lot simpler. I wonder if my first draft was really that overcomplicated or if I really am forgetting everything here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to drop some raw materials in here, let's see, I've got a crystal composite around here somewhere. I'm going to have it produce, haha, -ha. okay, I'm going to have it produce some dark gray hull. Good. And let's give this a shot. Good, production is active. This is active. That's inactive. Wait, yeah, it is. Okay. Got two, three, nine, and it shut off a little bit early. Okay. Good. Completes, empties. everything reset then? I think everything may be reset. Okay, so what happens if I press it again? Okay, and we have 18 dark gray hull have been produced. Alright, so here's what's happening. Um, basically, this is the star made version of the Minecraft device known as a hopper timer. Um, the production ticks and the pull ticks are different lengths. The, the pull tick appears to be twice as long as the production tick. So in theory, for every pull tick, or for every item being transferred from here to here, I should be producing two items up in the factory. Now in reality that works out to be slightly off because it's possible that I'm activating the button on the second production tick of the pull tick. In other words, on that first pull it only has time to produce a single item rather than two. Um, there's a way that I can fix that. I'm going to step back and I'm going to think about it for a minute and then I'm going to decide whether it's worth the effort. Okay, so it actually ended up being a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And here's, uh, here's the change I made. Come on, sorry, a little bit of lag. Um, <clears throat> basically the flip-flop no longer controls the factory all the flip-flop controls the only thing it points at is this storage okay so that's that's the only job it actually has right now um, what I've got is 
Wait, what does this do? Oh, right. Okay, sorry. Uh, so what I've got is the the ore block I went ahead and put back so that this, you know, this turns true when this has an item in it. Uh, this turns true when this has an item in it. And these two ore blocks together point into this and. So this only activates or uh, this only activates when there's an item both in this chest and in this chest. And as soon as one chest or the other is empty, it deactivates. Yeah? The AND is actually what controls the factory. So, uh, what I did is I stuck one extra item in here. So your formula for how many items to put in the, the supply chest is super easy. It's half of what you want your production run to be, plus one extra. Now, as soon as that one extra gets transferred over, the factory kicks on and produces twice as many items as there are um, items in the supply chest, minus the one. Yeah? Does that make perfect sense? I hope that makes perfect sense. I'm going to uh, go ahead and build a second one of these so that I can let you see one more time exactly how this works, because... I feel like maybe this wasn't the best explanation I've ever done. <laughs> and I want you to be able to see it again. Um, I'm actually, first of all though, believe it or not, I'm actually going to, well I'm not going to start with this, but I'm going to eventually dismantle this and hook it up to the bottom one so that I can just stack all three of these logic bricks, you know, for the stack of three factories. Uh, but I'm going to go over here. I'm going to I'm going to start with this one this time. This is the thousand run, right? Um, so let's see. I start out with, if I remember correctly, the buttons already set up with the end. That's correct. It is okay. Uh, the the end is going to toggle the flip flop. Yeah, uh, the flip-flop is going to be hooked up to a knot, and the knot is going to point back into the end, so that the button, whoa, so that the button only activates flip-flop if it's not already on. And that's important because it stops you from interrupting your own production runs. Okay, so far so good. And again, the reason why these are sticking off this instead of this is because this is for the bottom row factory instead of the top row factory, right? All right, that, let's see, let me, let me hook up just a little debug button here. Where's my buttons? There we go. It's handy to keep one of these, you know, near the flip-flops. Anytime really you're working with flip-flops, it's handy to have a button that you can slave into it. I'm just going to, I'm going to disconnect it, but I'm otherwise going to leave it right here until I'm finished building. Okay, so the, the flip-flop is going to control a storage block. Let's see, two over from that storage block right here. That storage block is going to be slaved into this one, and it's going to be slaved back into it so they can pull from each other. Right now I'm going to go ahead and deactivate storage pull on that one. Uh, let's see, this one is still selected. I'm going to go ahead and drop its or. Is that an or? That's an or. And now this one gets an or. The or on this one goes into a knot. The knot toggles the flip-flop. So that when it's empty, it kind of resets everything. Good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in, since this is a bottom row factory, I'm going to put in a thousand. No, I'm not. I'm going to put in 500 plus one. Good. And let's see. And this is why. Oh, whoops. Uh, that was not a good plan. Mm -hmm. How do I get this in the right position? Yeah, that's 
that's one way. Okay, that's what I want. Alright, so I can toggle it on by hand. That's nice to know. Sorry, I'm still still learning. Alright, uh, this, this OR is also going to point into an AND right here. Uh, this OR is going to point into an AND. Let's not forget to make this NOT control this flip-flop. Uh, and this AND is going to control the factory that I want to run. Yeah? Yeah. And that should be all there is to it. Oh, guys, guys, guys. Uh, I totally missed something here. This knot has got to enable this this uh, storage block. Because if it doesn't, you're screwed. <laughs> See, these are pretty much identical, except this one's pointing into the, the wrong factory. Yeah, that should be all there is to it. Yeah, that's that's your basic setup. And because this is a fairly compact design, uh, I've got a little bit of room to play with here. The middle row is going to go right here. And then the top row is going to go right here. And there's going to be an opaque block right here so that you can't actually see it. And I'm going to be able to fit them all in. And this is actually way more compact than the original design. And I'm much happier with it than I was with the original. So it's pretty cool. Um, I hope this was informative for y'all. Uh, remember that you've got to... Actually, I didn't do that yet. You've got to set up these to auto-pull. Uh, meh, meh. Mesh. Just one. Coming out of this one. This one, on the other hand, needs to be able to pull... The full total, and in fact, I always set it for at least a thousand, because just in case you end up changing something later, you don't want to have to remember to change the amount if you can help it. Um, and that's going to do it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you got some useful building tips. Uh, I'm happy to take feedback on my harvester. I really do kind of like it. Like, it's kind of the aesthetic I had in mind. Uh, but it is, I mean, it's a brick. <laughs> There's a lot of different harvester designs out there. I'm not looking to completely rebuild this one, but if anybody has any ideas for how to make it look more epic, I would happily listen. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. Uh, and yeah, take care. Bye-bye.